In the name of God, to the glory of God, and to the advancement of the Christian faith. Amen. If you're looking for meaning and honor, well, here's the place to be. We're going to be talking about the Mayflower, and I can work the studio software. It's been a little bit of a while since I've done anything here at my home studio, but today we're going to be talking about the Mayflower because this is one of the most beautiful events in human history, this voyage which was taken across the Atlantic Ocean, and there's so much to it and so much to talk about. So thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor, and I want to begin our study today by looking at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. And in that, the preacher writes, I have seen the travail, which God hath given over to the sons of Adam to be exercised thereon. God hath made everything beautiful in his time, and he has also set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work of God, which makes from the beginning to the end. Now, in that passage, we find a few things. One, life is a travail. We don't live in the Garden of Eden, nor do we live in the time after the judgment of the living and the dead. Everything we do in life is an adventure. And just like Job in chapter 38 is called to gird up his loins like a man and give an answer, everything in life demands we give an answer. How we organize our personal character, how we set up the world for our family and for our future, how we interact with our neighbors right now, everything demands we give an answer. And ultimately, at the top of all of that is God who demands an answer for what we do in life that we're given. Life itself is something which is beautiful. It is inherently good to be alive. But we are fallen creatures who are born into sin with a sinful nature. And we find this cosmic battle playing out in everything in the world around us where life itself is so precious, so beautiful before God. But yet there are so many sinful things, so many afflictions in the world which come to rob the good, the true, and the beautiful. Well, in our modern world, we've had this propaganda slip in among us that wants to brainwash us and have us broken where we can't really understand what heroism and proper nobility is. And if you want to teach your children really what it looks like to be noble, to be someone who is properly heroic, then we need to go back to the Mayflower. And my opening statement there is a paraphrase of the Mayflower Compact, which opens up saying, In the name of God, Amen. It's a prayer. It's meant to be a document of Christian history, not just a political document of another worldly nation. It's not just another philosophy to be tucked away in a book, but it's meant to be something so much more, the Mayflower Compact. So let's begin by learning a few quick things about the Mayflower. You know, I don't have a model of the Mayflower here in the house with me. I do have the Bowser ship over here from the Lego Mario set. It looks more like a frigate than a merchant ship, which is what the Mayflower was. You know, we have all these ideas in our head of what the Mayflower would have looked like. We imagine it looking kind of like one of Christopher Columbus's smaller ships, like the, the Nina or the Pinta. And we imagine the small little caravel with a beautiful forecastle, and it's got all these ornate carvings all the way around it, and it's large, and it's got all this room. You may think that. You may not. We imagine it going across the, the ocean there in all these storms. But let me tell you this. Whatever your thoughts are on the Mayflower, they're probably not heroic enough. They're probably not. You know, we have these images and things where you see the ship, and it looks kind of small here in this picture. You see a little forecastle in the front, which is that section of the ship which has some rooms that are up there on deck. But in truth, the Mayflower was a 180-ton merchant vessel. It was not made for ocean travel. And a 180-ton vessel is not very large. That's actually quite small in the age of exploration for your main craft to carry people across an ocean. The Mayflower was actually meant for small little trips here and there around Europe, going port to port, carrying some different mercantile items. Maybe it's carrying some wine. Maybe it's carrying some textiles. That's what the Mayflower was designed for. It wasn't designed to carry a whole crew of settlers across the Atlantic Ocean. And that's something which is really important to understand when it comes to the heroic truth behind the Mayflower. In our modern world, we're often told you have to have credentials in order to be a critical thinker. When in truth, you have to be a critical thinker before you can be someone who's actually wise and an expert, or you should ever have credentials. We've got it backwards. Well, when it comes to heroism, we always think, well, you've got to be someone who 
is in a position to do heroic things. You've got to have all the money to be Bruce Wayne so you can step in and be Batman. You've got to be someone who's gone through all the training, who's at the top of the world's echelons. You have that wonderful seat at the head of the table, and now you get to step in and be courageous whenever you want to. Got all the money, all the means, and all the, the influence in the world around to do it. But in truth, the Mayflower was just this small merchant vessel. Yeah, this happens in the middle of the age of exploration. You know, Christopher Columbus, he had come over in 1492 to find the, the Americas. We find other sailors who go around the world, great, great captains, great men of exploration. We find all these figures that go around the world, and yet they oftentimes took a wildly different set of vessels with them. We typically think of pirates and privateers and things of that nature on like a giant Spanish galleon. But in truth, something like this Bowser ship, a frigate, would have been kind of the typical thing you would want to have if you're a pirate. A galleon would have been a great ship to go around the world in exploration. Or like a small caravel, something which is made for that long pursuit. They're made for long journeys. The way they're rigged, the way you bring a crew on as the complement is very different. You know, we think about our own lives. The way you prepare a trip to go out of town is probably very different than how you prepare to go in town. A bicycle makes for a great toy, for lack of better words, to, to run around as a kid in your neighborhood. A bicycle doesn't make a great vehicle to go 100 miles. That is if you're a normal person, not somebody who's, you know, big into the cycling and things of that nature. But the Mayflower, it wasn't a vessel that was designed for this. We always have these stories of the underdog rising to the occasion, and that's really what the Mayflower was. You, what you had happening was a group of people got together, and I want to speak directly to each of us. I want us to think about our church. Think about the people that you have when you come together in, in your church, that church family. And maybe take a few of those people out and add a few extra people from the outside, but that general group with a few extras, maybe missing a few, imagine going on a voyage with them. A voyage where you knew that half of you might die. This is in the age of exploration. You're, you're taking a merchant vessel where there should be a larger ship. There should be a ship that's designed for this sort of oceanic voyage. You're taking a small vessel that's meant to just go port to port. You're going to try to navigate not just across the ocean, but also across the unknown. Again, this is before people really know much about America. Yes, there have been others. There have been Vikings. You can argue who came to America first. But regardless, by the time you get to 1620, there is very little known about the Atlantic Ocean, what these seas are going to be like, where the currents are, what to expect at the different times of year. Yes, there are talented sailors who know a lot about the world, but you're still traveling the unknown. And you're going to a land that is largely unknown. The Mayflower's voyage was a voyage into the unknown, with people who were unexperienced in this. They were not commissioned by King James to go and do this in the same way that Christopher Columbus was commissioned. In fact, the reason why they are going across the Atlantic Ocean is to establish something entirely new. Yes, it will ultimately turn into a British colony, but it's not because of things going so well in Britain that they're doing this. It's not because of the, the wonderful things going on in Europe that they go to America, but it's in fact because of some divisions, because of some, some breakdowns within the church, because of some breakdowns within society that they are going on this vision. And one of the things that I love in Scripture is Philippians 4.8, which reads, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever things are beautiful, Whatever things are commendable and of good report, if there be any virtue, anything virtuous and worthy of praise, meditate and focus on these things. When you read the Mayflower Compact, which opens up saying, In the name of God, Amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, we by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, Ireland, defender of the faith, etc., we together have undertaken for the glory of God and to the advancement of the Christian faith and the honor of king and country a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. That opening statement in the Mayflower Compact, which is about half of it, they basically opened up Philippians 4.8 and said, we're going to do it. We together are going to have a voyage into the true, 
into the noble, into the just, into the pure, into the beautiful, they knew they may never be seen again. We think about the Titanic on its maiden voyage disappearing there beneath the Atlantic, not to be found for, you know, well over half a century later. What we find here, it was expected that something like the Mayflower would never be seen or heard from again. These people, they're not explorers. They're not taking their nice little ornate caravel. They're not taking a a great big galleon. They're taking a merchant ship. A merchant ship which is a rather small one, to have the amount of people that was on there and be on it for 66 days. It's, it's pretty crowded. It's pretty cramped. This is what real heroism looks like because these people, they looked at the travail, which is mentioned there in Ecclesiastes 3.10. They looked at the adventure that is life. They looked at the valley of the shadow of death, which is all of life. Death, it looms for us all. We're mortals. Life is filled with things which want to lie, that want to deceive, which want to work corruption, which want to come in and spoil the goodness that you have in your family. They looked at the travail and they said, you know what? God gave us life for a time such as this. We want to build a society for our our children, for our posterity, for those who love God, who want to advance the Christian faith, who want to have that glory of God in their life. We want to build a society that is unlike anything we've seen before, unlike things we've seen before in human history. And it's it's so easy just to spend a few minutes looking at the Mayflower, but it's so difficult to really appreciate the good, the true, and the beautiful that these people were pursuing. I've got a couple of other scriptures I want to read today, and then we'll wrap this up. In Psalms chapter 40, Verses 4 and 5, it says, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor turn aside to lies. Those on the Mayflower, they did make the Lord their trust. They had seen the proud. They had seen issues going on there in England. They had seen issues going on with the church, how how it had gotten in bed with politics and how that had worked some, some wicked things. They saw that the world was filled with tyranny, with people who want to lie, who want to create lies at the foundation of society, and they want to just bring destruction. They saw that and they said, we're going to turn away from that. We're going to turn away from the tyranny and we're going to turn towards the Lord. And verse 5 of Psalm 40 reads, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. You know, there's a preposition we don't get much in modern English, us word. The Lord's thoughts, the Lord's wonderful works, which have been done for creation, for us who are his children, made in his image. The psalm reads, They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I were to declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. God's miracles, God's works are more than we can number. They have been done for us. And in response to that, we as his creatures, we are called to do noble acts. I want us to think for a few moments. What we were doing last summer, you know, it's Thanksgiving time again. What were you doing last Thanksgiving? It may seem like it was just a blink of an eye away. The older I get, the faster time goes. This voyage lasted 66 days. And while that seems really long, think about what you were doing on, say, the 4th of July, Independence Day. Think about what you were doing three months ago. It's November now. Go all the way back to, say, August. That really is not that long ago. But within that time span, these people went from being in one world to another. They watched people they knew die. Maybe it was people they didn't know so well, but they saw the travail of life unfold around them on this voyage. Within just over two months, they made it from Europe here to Plymouth Rock, where they would establish that first colony. And this was a difficult thing. I want us to think about how it would be if we were in one world just 66 days ago. Think about what you were doing just a few months ago. And now think about where you are now. Imagine if in that time you went from one world to another. You went from a place where there was a lot of tyranny. There was a lot of lies. There was a lot of corruption in society. But now you're going to the unknown. You're going to the wilderness where you're going to set up a new society. 
Some of you are going to surely die. Many of you may never live to see the fruits of that society. Your children, your grandchildren may not see it either. But somewhere deep within the human spirit, deep within the creature, which is the imago Dei, made in the image of God, is this desire for hope, this desire for honor, for meaning, for purpose. And to pass that on to our children, to our descendants, to those who will come after us. Those who got on the Mayflower, and this was a difficult adventure. This was, it was very dangerous. It was very deadly. But it was extraordinarily good. Proverbs 25, 28 reads, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Our modern world is filled with propaganda and it wants to break down America. He that hath no rule over his own spirit, you who don't have rule over your own character, you're going to be someone who is broken down and without walls. You're ready to be pillaged, to be plundered. The world wants to afflict our heritage. You look there in Psalm 94, it talks about that. The psalmist writes, O Lord thy God, how long will we have to suffer under these that afflict thine heritage? There's a lot of people who want to deconstruct, to tear apart the root, the root of America, which we find here with this pilgrim voyage on the Mayflower, but it is something so important for us to emphasize. It is something to take honor with, to receive this story, to look at the pilgrims, to look at those who sailed across on the ship. Take honor in your heart. Take dignity with it. It is the good, the true, and the beautiful, and we should be living in that stead. We should be teaching our children how beautiful it was for these men and women to undertake this mysterious voyage into the unknown. I want to close today by reading from Psalm 93. The Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago, you are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waves, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. To tap into the story of the Mayflower is to tap into something of God's kingdom, which is transcendent, it is eternal, it is beautiful, and it is being ripped away from our society. The world knows that if people don't have control over their own spirit, if they don't have certainty in who they are, if they don't love themselves, if they don't love their mother and father. You know, a big part of honoring your mother and father is honoring your heritage because if you hate your heritage, you're not going to love yourself. You're not going to be willing to defend yourself. You're not even going to be willing to defend the children around you, your own bloodline. But if you do honor your parents, if you honor your heritage, you're going to be someone who wants to assert the good, the true, and the beautiful and hands over something noble to your children. You read there in John 15, 13, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That is what the Mayflower was doing when it departed for its beautiful voyage. With that, thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor. May God love you and have a blessed day.